Well, hello everybody, Don Balance here with another Facebook Live tutorial here from New Tech on Tuesday. And today, I'd like to give you some production tips that will allow you to make sure that all of the audio and video in your productions are going where you want them to go. So let's just talk about working with a switcher. If I am looking at input one on the switcher, and I'm not seeing input one showing up on my output, there are a few things I can check. Now, first of all, I want to check and make sure that the input itself is configured. So I double click on the input here in the TriCaster, and I can pull down from this menu and configure any of these NDI sources I want. I'll just go ahead and bring up this NDI source. Now I see it on output one, so that was my problem. My input was not configured correctly. But what if I'm still not getting video out of an output? Now I might want to check the physical inputs and outputs of the production device. Now to do that, you can do it very easily with just a small SDI cable. Of course, make sure it's a functioning SDI cable. And what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and down here in buffer number 15 inside of this production unit, I have color bars. So I'm going to set up the outputs now. And output number two, we're going to set to buffer 15, which is those color bars. If I look at the back of my production system, this is the output area. And I want to make sure that I go to row number two, SDI, which is going to be right here. These are going to be the analog outputs if you are using analog. But for this test, we're testing SDI outs to SDI ins. I'm now going to plug this in to input number two, and I should see it if my inputs and outputs are functioning. But I made another mistake, and that is on the back of a TriCaster 8000, you have a row of AES EBU connectors above the SDI connectors. And it's a very common mistake for people to plug SDI into those thinking that's the SDI connection. Just make sure that you're plugged into the second row, that is the SDI row. And now I can see those color bars coming in through input number two. So I know that output number two is functioning and input number two is functioning. And if I want, I can just now go down the row, go to input number three, look at input number three, and so forth, and check all of the inputs and all of the outputs in this fashion. And this sort of video loopback test will work with literally any production switcher. Now, when we are talking about dealing with a TriCaster, Let's go ahead and say we want to be looking at DDR1, and I'll just be playing DDR1 back. And it shows up in the output like it should. But there might be times when it doesn't. There might be times where I put it into the output, but I'm not seeing it. I'm not seeing it at all. And what's actually happening in here is you've got an overlay with a full screen graphic that is completely overlaying on top of the video. If we take that down, we can see that we see the video the way that we think we should see the video, and we can switch between the videos, and everything works the way that we think it should. If that overlay is up, now I'm switching, and I can actually see the switch happening in my background monitor right here, but you don't see it on output because you've completely obscured it with a graphic. So just make sure that you don't have any over overlays that are completely obscuring the image. Now there are also times where you want to use an overlay, and let's say I bring this overlay up, and it seems to be fully up, but I don't see anything. And that's because the overlay has been positioned off the screen. You can tell the positioner is on. Notice how these little crosshair icons are white, and this one's blue. That's telling me it's active. So if I open that up, and I hit the reset button, now I see that overlay exactly where I thought it should be, and I can start the process using it however I'd like to from there forward. Now another thing that can happen to us when we're using the TriCaster is the preview might not look the way we think it should. Now I've set the preview here and I'm changing things on preview but I'm not seeing preview change. That's because this is a true look ahead preview and we have the ability to delegate what's going to happen when we use this main T-bar and right now we can tell that DSK1 is delegated. It's got that blue line around it. If I click here, now DSK2 is delegated. And look, it's showing me this is what's going to happen if I hit that auto button, because it's just going to bring up DSK2. So to make sure that I'm back at what I would consider a normal mode, 
is clicking on this monitor right here, and this sets you to the background mode. There's also a background button on your control surface, which will set you back to the background mode. And now, preview and program start functioning the way that I would expect them to. Well, I hope this tutorial has been helpful to you. If you have any comments or suggestions on other things you'd like covered, please put them in the comments below. And we'll see you again for another live Facebook Tuesday tutorial. Thanks for watching.